In this video, we will be looking at NASA Open VSP or Open Vehicle Sketchpad. So this is a software that you can download on your personal computers to design your own aircrafts, unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, design and test new unconventional aircraft configurations, and also perform a simple aerodynamic analysis or structural analysis. A big advantage of using Open Vehicle Sketchpad is uh, the ability to parameterize your geometry. So since most of the aircraft components have uh, predefined variables such as aspect ratio, taper ratio and uh, the span and these variables are much easier to define using this parametric geometry definition. So today let us make a simple aircraft model and uh, you'll quickly run through uh, generating a model, uh, performing an aerodynamic analysis and also look at the features of uh, parasitic drag calculation. So here I have the interface or the user interface of the software and on the right hand side I have the geometry tab which you could get it from the model menu and this first option is geometry and I can select uh, the geometry that I like you have uh, many options here so let me start with wing and all I do before that let me just name my vehicle I just call it uh, UAV uh, yes and then I add the wing so I have a predefined wing that comes here and this wing is fully parameterized I don't have to uh, create a wing like you would do in other uh, default CAD softwares so here under the wing section we have the rotation and the translational features so I can change the XYZ location and now in this current orientation you have the leading edge of the wing at the origin of the coordinate frame of reference. You can also see the frame of reference at the lower uh, left corner of your screen. And uh, next we have rotations. So the rotations are useful if you want to make a vertical tail or add anhedral or dihedral to your uh, aircraft model. And uh, so we see in a subsection, let's go to platform and here you see the most common variables associated with uh, a wing design. So we have span that can be altered and also the area, just go to top view. So we have in the section, we have multiple sections. And so currently this is just one section so if you want to have a multi-panel wing you can cut this into two sections or more than that so if I put split and then now I have two wing sections and I can independently control the span of these sections so that's how I control this and then we have the other features such as sweep the location of sweep and also the twist required uh, along the span of the wing so let's leave this wing as it is since this is more of a quick run through to how to get up and running the aerodynamic analysis on a configuration. Next we have the airfoil section. So here we can either define your 4 series uh, NACA airfoil. So let me just change this from the symmetric configuration to uh, uh, general wing airfoil. So let's use the 2412. So that's how I can change this. I can change this the thickness to chord ratio which is the last two digits of the NACA airfoil so I can directly change it here and the camber sorry so that the camber is the first and the camber location is the second so I have NACA 241 to define and then we look at an airfoil cross section here that is alright so if you're interested you could have uh, different airfoils at every section so let me define this new NACA 2412 at all of these sections um, so. so this should be 4 and 2 
sorry I need to click on these two all right so we have 2412 at section 1 all right so we have all of the sections of the wing defined with the same uniform airfoil so this is a non-symmetric airfoil and so that's how we have a wing these are other features uh, to have additional span wise components added to the wing such as uh, winglets and things like that so let's just leave it at default and we close the wing so in the wing one thing we missed was also in the general you can define a density for your wing so if it's made from uh, composite materials or aluminum alloys you put the right density because that would something that would be something of interest for us to be used later in a structural calculation or a stability analysis where we would be requiring the inertia of our configuration so I leave this as a dissolve default of one all right so let me quickly add a fuselage so there we have the fuselage and so let me scale down the fuselage I change the X coordinate position and also I can go to design and reduce the length of the fuselage So there's no worry if you run out of this uh, slider which has a maximum limit you can manually change the values here so let me just bring to an appropriate location this is nowhere uh, aircraft that is sized correctly or uh, based on any predefined requirements but just a rough configuration that might or might not fly so we see that the fuselage diameter is a bit too large let's try and uh, reduce it so if I go to the X sections so that takes me through various uh, cross sections of the fuselage and here I can change the height and the width of the fuselage so that's an interesting parameter that you can uh, play around with you could also change the cross section to a different uh, type so let me just change the z location of this a bit low and uh, also change this to a circle the next one to a circle reduce the diameter so that it looks similar to the boom of a conventional fixed wing UAV probably move the so let's say I want to make the nose a bit more aerodynamic so I can just insert an additional cross section that I can play around with and change this to a circle so when I increase the diameter I just have a new extra dimension to play around with let me also move this slightly down and also the nose So you can also play around with this location of the cross section and uh, let me just finish this off and not waste any more time in uh, getting a very good geometry okay I think this is all right for me now and uh, so probably we could assume that this is a 
tractor configuration UAV where you have a propeller in the front and uh, yeah let me move the fuselage a bit more lower down so that we have the wing as a high wing configuration all right that looks good for now and also overall reduce the length so let me change to 15 So just to keep the scales of various components same, I'm going to increase the span a bit of this wing. So that looks um, much better now. Let me now add another wing, which is going to be our horizontal tail. So let's call this the HT or the horizontal tail and we'll change the X location and obviously scale down the size so reduce the span so you can always play around with the views to have a more appropriate control over how the features are being defined Use the sweep section. All right, that looks okay. Now next let me add a vertical tail, so we name as VT and change the location. So what is important in the vertical tail is to have just one side of the wing and not a symmetric wing. So we can change that with the rotation feature that is we have this wing along the x-axis so we rotate it along the x and change that to 90 degrees there it merges into a single wing section which we can then modify so let's reduce the span and uh, sweep it looks uh, still oversized so let me reduce that even more Alright, that looks like an okay configuration. Again, we have not defined any pre-required mission or any particular wing loading. So this is just an arbitrary configuration for our analysis. So having defined all of these parameters, let us now look at analysis. So here in the analysis feature, before that let me just save the model and I call this uh, UAV. So under analysis, the first one we have is computation of the geometry. And uh, so all we have to do is just click execute and it computes the geometry. So what it does is it cal calculates the theoretical area and the wetted area for each of the components that we have used to make this UAV. And uh, why is this important? So the wetted area is an important quantity to be used in 
the parasitic drag calculation so which we will come across later and hence this calculation also tells us what is the total wetted area of the entire aircraft so once that's done it also prepares the model for further analysis next let us go on to parasitic drag sorry let us first look at degenerate geometry so what degenerate geometry does is also that it creates new instances of the same configuration so that it can be used for other type of analysis such as aerodynamic analysis and structural analysis which require not just the outer shape of the aircraft but they require a panel configuration for example for vortex lattice methods or an FEM model for structural analysis so the output of this degeneration produces a CSV file and a MATLAB file so using these uh, output files you can then uh, send the aircraft to perform further analysis in either MATLAB or in another Python script to perform optimizations or uh, do any kind of structural load analysis or aerodynamic calculations so let's just execute this and it also shows you that two files have been created next let's look at parasitic drag so parasitic drag is the drag that's not generated due to lift but the drag due to the shape of the aircraft so parasitic drag can be broken down into skin friction drag, interference drag and pressure drag. Pressure drag is mainly due to the shape of the body and it's more dominant in the wake. While skin friction drag is dependent on the wetted surface area of the body and the friction uh, because you have something known as the boundary layer that acts very close to the surface of the aircraft. and. Uh, so you have something known as the no slip condition where the fluid sticks to the surface and there is a gradient of velocity that you see within this boundary layer now this boundary layer can be laminar or turbulent and they can create different magnitudes of the drag so what we do here in parasitic drag is to use some kind of a handbook method to compute what could be the estimated parasitic drag contribution of the entire aircraft. So to learn more about the types of equations that's being used, you could go to the documentation tab and click on the link to the complete wiki. So here we see the instruction manual for how the parasitic drag tool works. So it's pretty much easy to follow along this uh, theory that's given here. Why? How does the software calculate the wetted area? How does it deal with surface inter intersections? And calculating the Reynolds number of each component and also predicting the right formula to be used for both the laminar skin friction and the turbulent skin friction. So there are various methods of estimating the screen friction, which is a function of the Reynolds number. So based on experimental data or any pre-existing aircraft models as a reference, you could choose the correct uh, turbulence and the laminar model for your uh, skin friction drag calculations. Here we also see the magnitude of uh, skin friction variation with the Reynolds number. So here I'm going to leave these as default. So it says that it's going to use the Blasius equation for the laminar skin friction calculation and the power law Blasius for the turbulent skin friction calculation. Next we look at the reference area. So any kind of non-dimensionalization of the drag coefficient is based on a reference area and that reference area is usually taken as the wing area. So here we set it from the model and refer that to the wing geometry and also set some operating conditions. You can change the units by setting the right dimensions here and then we can change this to our liking. Let's just set the 
free speed of 200 meter per second and 8000 meter altitude and so here we have the wing components so when i click calculate cd naught you see the scholars being filled up so what openvsp does is use the wetted area calculated from the previous option that we just carried out that is to degenerate the geometry and use that to also uh, find out what is the form factor contribution and all of these parameters such as the skin friction and the form factor summed up together gives you an estimate of the final drag coefficient so here we see that the total drag coefficient that is a parasitic drag is 0 0.01062 and another interesting variable that we see here is exosense so since it's a very basic model you haven't accounted for windows or any kind of projections or surface surface irregularities such as sensors mounted on the exterior of the aircraft landing gear etc so you could just add a rough additional value so let me just take that as 10 percent of the total drag coefficient and recalculate the cd0 so here we have the existence drag added which is around 10 percent of the total drag and there we have the new value of the parasitic drag coefficient at 0.01162. So it's also interesting to see the breakdown of the drag contributions from the various geometries. So we have the wing at 42% followed by the fuselage, horizontal and vertical tail. So any kind of modifications in order to reduce the parasitic drag might be focused more exclusively on the wing and the fuselage geometry. Since we have parasitic drag out of the way, let us now go to uh, an aerodynamic analysis. So in the aerodynamic analysis, OpenVSP uses two different methods. So that is the vortex lattice method and the panel method. You can read up more about these methods online, but rough understanding and you can obviously read up to this in uh, any aerodynamic textbook. but to just get running here, we start with the VLM method and what VLM cannot do is to predict uh, any kind of viscous uh, feature of the flow. That is, it doesn't take into account the boundary layer that's been created. So in the parasitic drag calculation that we carried on earlier, uh, we do account for the skin friction and the interference drag and overall account for the boundary layer of the aircraft. But here we look at the entire flow as invis inviscid that is the absence of viscosity so what is the disadvantage of this feature is that uh, we cannot see any kind of non-linearities in the aerodynamic measurements of the lift and drag quantities and there is also no prediction of flow separation from the bodies which rest which restricts us to a very small range of angles of attack however in conceptual design we actually do not require an extensive in-depth insights into the fluid flow around the body because eventually we're going to carry out flight tests or use wind tunnels or computational fluid dynamics to further refine the aerodynamics of the aircraft so let me set the reference area again to the wing geometry and here we have the flow conditions that is the angle of attack of the aircraft so let me just send it from minus 10 to positive 10 degree and set up let's say 15 points and that's all that's required to perform an initial run and we launch the solver Alright, so the calculation has been completed. So in the results manager what we see is first a convergence plot that is there are multiple iterations that the solver uses to arrive at the solution and here we can see that it has taken five week iterations 
and our solution has converged to a stable value you can also check this for other parameters such as track coefficient or the vertical force so let's look at load distribution and we can see uh, sorry let's first look at sweep and the most interesting thing to look at is the lift coefficient versus angle of attack and you see that with an increase in angle of attack you have an increase in lift coefficient and uh, let us next look at the induced drag versus lift coefficient and uh, this is a very important uh, um, graph that we would require in order to figure out what is the induced drag contribution for the lift coefficient at which the aircraft cruises so since I previously told you that the VLM is unable to calculate the parasitic drag the induced drag coefficient is not the only drag coefficient that we are interested in so let us also look at CD0 and the CD total so when you add the parasitic drag to the induced drag you have a much higher drag coefficient corresponding to uh, lift coefficient and this would give you important information such as uh, the angle at where you fly at minimum drag and also the kind of propulsion system that would be most efficient for this configuration So in the load distribution, you can also see the span wise distribution of the lift or any other variable of interest. Uh, and then you can use this as a reference or a benchmark to improve your design. So let us look at the zero angle of attack and the lift coefficient over the span. And as we increase the angle of attack, the magnitude increases. So what you want to have is an more, mostly an elliptical distribution because that is what minimizes the induced drag contribution. So we can again go back to our design and perform changes such as changes in taper ratio, sweep angle or twist and then arrive at a much more optimum configuration. So that is what we have for uh, this tutorial and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you like this video uh, don't forget to like and also subscribe to my channel to get more of such uh, educative videos thank you